everybody welcome back to another episode of the fan experience podcast thank you if, if, if for you first timers thank you for tuning in for you returning viewers uh thank you for coming back uh i want to wish a happy hanukkah to all those that are celebrating uh today uh today is uh night one of hanukkah so happy hanukkah to you um yeah so we got you know we got a lot to talk about we have a super bowl rematch going on right now as well uh the rams are up 10 nothing but the patriots just recovered a fumble or an interception uh mind you and um they have a short field right now uh as always i am your host mike kados alongside me is my co-host rick molina rick how are we doing tonight doing good mike doing well tonight happy hanukkah to everybody out there who uh, celebrates uh, hanukkah this is the first night as you said so you know, enjoy the celebration and the festivities. And uh, this uh, part of the show is brought to you by PlayTheFieldDating.com. Go to PlayTheFieldDating. If you're looking for that mate, start that softball team or looking to just, uh, you know, hang out with some sports friends and talk some sports, go to PlayTheFieldDating.com and, uh, and uh, you know, make some connections. Yeah, But all is well, my friend. All is well. Yeah, yeah why don't you, why don't you uh, lead us off? Well, you know, obviously, you know, the big news in the NBA today with uh, um, with uh, Paul George signed a four-year, $190 million extension to the Clippers. Uh, you know, this just kind of solidifies him there in L.A. along with uh, Kawhi Leonard. Um, and so that's the duo, man, that's going to do it out there. And uh, along with uh, Ty Luz, who's going to be the head coach over there. Think if I'm not mistaken, you know, and the question is, are they going to be able to overtake the Lakers? I don't know. I don't think so. I still think that's a Laker town. The Lakers are going to dominate mm -hmm. over there. Um, but you know, it's this is a year for Paul George to sort of step up. You know, he's always had that na knock on him in the playoffs of of not coming through, not not having big moments in the playoffs. And obviously, Kawhi is Kawhi. You know, he's won already. Uh, what is it? Two NBA titles already? Is it two or three? How many has he won? Three. Um, I think it's. I think it's two. I think it's two. Yeah, it's two, but um, and so you know, this is a like I said, big year for both of them. Turn things around a little there, see if they can, you know, you know, after the disaster in the bubble getting knocked out over there, if they can turn things around this season, um, and get back to uh, see if they can get back to a conference finals against the Lakers and see if they make some noise and make a run and get to an NBA finals. Uh, I don't think they're gonna do it. I think the Lakers are just, you know, as long as LeBron James is in the league, that man, nothing. I don't think anybody, any uh, let me. A fully loaded Golden State Warriors team might have a, a shot to stop them, but uh, you know LA is going to. You know, unfortunately, the Clippers are going to have to play second fiddle right now. Paul George is going to have to prove that he's worth every penny of that hundred ninety million dollar contract. Yeah, uh, like you said, you know, it's it's the Lakers. It, it's the Lakers league to lose, right? Yeah, yeah. Lakers um, and everybody else. You know, it, it's yeah. it's the Lakers until it's not. <laughs> um, but you. Uh, you also, uh, who was it? James Harden is looking uh, looking to, you know, go to the Heat. You know, he's adding the Heat to the, his list of, of teams that he would like to go to. And if something like that were to happen, you know, obviously the Heat, you know, made it to the finals this, you yeah. know, this past. Just uh, uh, Mike, I don't mean to cut you in, but uh, breaking news: the uh, the, Ram the Rams defense just scored a touchdown. So there you go. <laughs> the fantasy football team is doing. There you well. go, fantasy football playoffs. Uh, there it is. Anyone uh, in the in the uh, playoffs in their fantasy football league, you know, comment below. But uh, I I eked out a win on Tuesday night, three points, and uh, I am in. And I had the Rams defense going, so it's a uh, it's a good way to start it off. Good good um, stuff for the show. So get back to the uh, yeah get back to the to the Clippers there. Yep. Um. Yeah. Well, no, I was talking about um James Harden. You know, going yeah. to yeah going to the Heat. You know, potentially, obviously. Uh, yeah. But if that were to happen, you know, obviously it would um, make make the Heat uh, stronger, and yeah. they were right in the mix. You know, they made it to the finals, so absolutely, you know that that's something that could probably dethrone the King uh, a yeah, little bit. So yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But in other news in the NBA, Dallas Mavericks uh, released uh, JJ Barea, um, but he got. 2.6 million guaranteed, you know, Mr. Mark Cuban, you know, he's uh, taking care of his players. Yeah. Uh, you know, he spent 11 years there and he wanted to take care of his, uh, his players because of, you know, what they brought to, you know, to the franchise and uh, it's a plus in my book. Yeah. That's, that's an owner who gets it. That's a guy who appreciates hard work, his players, what, the, what JJ Barrett meant to the team, to the city. 
Um, you know, and kudos to Mark Cuban for doing that because a lot of owners don't do that. You know, once these guys leave the league, you know, these owners are like, well, we paid them their contract, you know, but kudos to him for doing that. That's that's that is that is a, a classy thing to do there, yeah. you know, um, and to give him that. And it's uh, as a thank you for for what he did for the league. And I think other owners should take note of that, you know, and I think ownership is, you know, things are changing in the world and ownership needs to change. And I think some of the owners that need to start realizing, man, we, we need to pay these big contracts or whatever. But somebody like J.J. Barrera, who's been the team for 11 years, a guy who's a stand up guy, played hard every night, did the right thing. You know, Cuban does the right thing for him. So good job by Mark Cuban, man. That's a guy you want to work for. That's mm -hmm. a guy as a player, whether you're playing for them or you're not playing for them, but you want to get there because that's a guy you want to go to war for. And the league players notice that and the league appreciates that. Um, so and I hope other owners take note of, you know, guys on their teams who play, who stay there for a while, maybe won a championship. Maybe they didn't. But you know what? Do, you know, doing a solid and say, hey, you know, we're going to sign you for a year. Thank you for what you've done. And um and, uh, you know, please, you know, be a part of the team, be a part of the family. So kudos to him on uh, the Harden thing. I think if he went to Miami, that would be incredible. Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, mm. uh, you know, and then you got James Harden. I mean, the question is, is he going to be able to let the ball go a little bit more? Is he going to play some defense over there? Because Spolster's a big defensive guy. But that would be something in the East. And then you got to ask yourself, what's Giannis going to do if he sees that stack lineup? Is he yeah. gonna stay? Is he gonna stay in Milwaukee? I mean, who knows? Is he or you know, is he gonna say I gotta go somewhere else? So a lot of chess pieces being moved around in the league. You know, a lot of pieces being moved around. A lot of decisions being made going on. Uh, but like you said, it's still the Kings League, and no matter that, no matter what happens, as long as that man's there, he's the guy to beat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but just touching on the ownership, you know, and uh, it starts with the owner, and yeah, you course. know that. That is why I am excited right now as as a Mets as a fan, Met fan. And, yeah. You know, and uh, Mr. Steve Cohen just got verified on Twitter, and his yeah, wife. he's all he's all um, over social media, right? Twitter, yeah, he's stuff. you know, and and Cuban is it also obviously, you know, he's, yeah. he's very social. He's on TikTok, yeah. You know, but this is this is what the you know getting to the ownership part. This is this is what fans want more engaging yeah. ownership. They don't want the sort culture. of this ownership, right? They don't want this ownership like in the Ivory Tower, like. You know, I'll give you an example. The Jet ownership, like Jet fans want to know why Adam Gase hasn't been fired yet, right? They want to know why this disaster. And they, their owners are like, you know, we don't talk to the end of the year. Owners give press conferences once a year. Like these owners are starting to set an example and a trend that owners getting on social media, talking to the fans, engaging to the fans, you know, getting involved. I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing for sports, good thing for teams, good thing for fans, good thing for, and good thing for us. So we can get a chance to talk about it. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, our um, our next guest. Oh, he's here. Is, All right, that is going to be coming on. Uh, he actually, you know, spoke to Mr. Mark Cuban um, on his podcast. Um, now joining us is Jack Settlement, the creator of Snapback Sports. Jack, how you doing? What up, fellas? Can you hear me? All right. Yeah. What's going on, Jack? Perfect. How you been, man? Loud and clear. I've been all right. How about yourself? Doing good, man. Thanks doing for coming great. on doing tonight. Great. Appreciate you having me. I'm excited. First night of Hanukkah. Yeah, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Um, yeah, so, you know, well, like Rick said, you know, thank you for coming on. Uh, so, you know, we usually, you know, get started. You know, we dive back to the beginning. You know, where did your love for sports come from? My love for sports came from a family business. So my family business uh, on my mom's side, her dad, her dad's um, father-in-law, started beer distribution in Maryland. So we actually sell Miller Light, Coors Light to the Baltimore Ravens, the Baltimore Orioles, Washington Wizards growing up. So wins and losses meant a lot more than just right sports wins and losses because it hits the bottom line. If the Ravens go deep in the playoffs, then we sell more beer each week and then the parade and that. So each round is actually right like a more yeah. successful season for the mm -hmm. business. So. Growing up in that and watching my mom and my aunt and my grandmother be so tied to sports, it was just like sports always meant more. So that's kind of like the backstory to why I love the business of sports. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so are you a big um, Ravens fan, I, I gather? Huge Ravens fan. Huge Lamar Jackson fan. Uh, we have season tickets. You know, I went growing up from as early as I can remember. We've been watching. I'm down in Florida right now. 
um, without, but I, I actually went to the Colts game this year, which just felt good in a year of 2020 to be able to watch the Ravens play live. It, it felt like normal somewhat besides, you know, wearing a mask yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, that's, you know, it's just the, the cards we were dealt and we got to make the best. Yeah. Of yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Jack, when you were in high school, you were, you were a soccer player, right? You, you played soccer and basketball, but you lean more towards soccer at first. Yeah. I was a soccer player growing up. I played club soccer. So okay. club would be, you know, you go to PA for a weekend or you go up to New York or Jersey um, and then McDonough, where I went to school, a private school in Maryland, had a really good soccer program. So my senior year, we went undefeated. We finished one in the country. The team was amazing. And then in the winter, I played basketball. I was the only senior on the team. We went defeated in conference, didn't win a game in conference. So really the tale of both stories there. Ah, oh, that's incredible, man. That's incredible. And then, so you, you, uh, you were number one in the country, uh, in your season, your school was number one in the country in the national soccer rankings, but yet you, you know, as, as your, your career has evolved, as you got into the business side of sports, yeah. you tail more toward basketball. How did that sort of, is that the way you kind of wanted to go or was that's, was just, that's just sports media in America, right? It. Like it, if yeah. we were in England right now, it'd probably be the complete opposite. <laughs> but yeah. I try to put a lot of soccer in my content, especially yeah. right now with the way the U.S. is building. Some of the young kids they have mm -hmm. are excellent. I mean, they're running Champions League soccer over there. So I'm pretty excited about that. But yeah, it's football and basketball here in the U.S., especially social media. Basketball culture is just taking over. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, NBA, NBA has been doing phenomenally, you know, the last few years yeah. and, uh, you know, it all starts with, with social media. So on the subject of social media, you know, mm -hmm. obviously you, you, you created, you know, a, a very successful, uh, channel on, on Snapchat. So walk us through, you know, why you, you went to the Snapchat route, you know, what, what got it started, you know, why the name snap back. You know, just yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll break all that down. So funny enough, uh, my sophomore year of college with my roommate, we did a little e-commerce site. We'd make designs, you know, LeBron's block on Igadala and Kyrie shot over Steph. And we were selling them all through social media and we were paying 500 bucks and wow. we would make, you know, $700 profit on the revenue that we sold, but it was only 200 net because we just paid. Mm -hmm. Right. So we got to do two grand in revenue just to make the margins were very slim. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what if we just own that page? Mm -hmm. What if we didn't have to pay? So that's when I started to build out the page. And I actually started the page my senior year and it was called real, real sports. Essentially it had an underscore in it. And I had grown up in sports business. Like I told you guys about, yep. but mm -hmm. I didn't think about the show on HBO. I don't know why. And then, <laughs> so, you know, 18 months down the line, it became a conflict yeah. of interest. So we yeah. actually then changed the name about, uh, 16 months ago to Snapback Sports. But uh, that was kind of the thinking. And then why Snapchat is always the best question. So Instagram, very busy. A lot of people, uh, a few years ago when I started the page, Twitter, super busy as well with that stuff. So I was like, there's no one really doing this on Snap. And it turned out to be perfect because Snap is the perfect platform for what I'm doing. You know, House of Highlights, ESPN, Sports Center all these meme pages on Instagram, they're there, but you can't skip through. You can't watch like one page really get constant updates. And that's what people like. So for tonight, Rams, Patriots, if I can't get the game or I'm at dinner for the first half, people are going to come home. They'll click through, see what happened the first half. Then they'll tune in or they'll check it in the morning. So the platform actually turned out to be perfect, but I went there just because no one was really doing it there. Awesome. And, and so how, you know, I'm, I'm a little older than you are, yeah. so I, I never really got into the the Snapchat. Uh, so how did it like work out? How did you push it out? You know, so, how did so, it become you know so viral and it, right? It's so Great question. Out. Because right now we're living in a time where TikTok, like you see, so many stars take off because their platform is built that way, and Instagram to a degree. Uh, I would say is like second tier to grow that way. On Twitter, you've got the retweet. And now if you like someone's post, that'll show up on someone else's feed. Snap didn't have really many of those features. So uh, the one thing it had is its discover page. So right side of the app, if you had enough viewers or your content was viral, you could be found there and then they would subscribe. They actually removed that feature from non-verified accounts. So that you know put me in a weird position. But 
fortunately, we had a nice base of followers. And we also had um, the ability to buy shout outs from other pages. So a comedy page, a like minded audience of male comedy who would like sports. You pay them, you know, 500 bucks. They'll shout you out, tag you. You gain from there. So senior year, when I started the whole thing, it was essentially, you know, pay someone 100 bucks, get a thousand new followers or whatever it turned out to be, and then go pitch the same phone case company that I was. There were 20 of them. And say, hey, let me promote your phone case for a hundred bucks. I would do that, reinvest, and it just became that cycle until eventually I got to a point where I didn't have to spend that money. Yeah, Jack has has has, have you you taken a step back and and see? In two years, you start a snapback. You have nine (laughs) hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, you know, you have over a billion views, posted over fifty thousand times. Have you have you just taken a moment, just like wow, I can't believe this has happened so fast in like two and a half, three years? Uh, that's a good question. I probably should do that. And I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you pointing that out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like anything good in life, I think yeah. people need to appreciate what they've done. And, you know, mm-hmm. we live in a society where it's like you're always chasing the next thing. But like you guys yeah. are saying, from your point of view, it's like what I've done so far is awesome. Um, and I think you can have that balance of like be happy about what you've done, but also be ready to go do the next thing. So uh, I'm always looking to do more, always looking to grow. But there are times where I I don't like to appreciate it. I like to joke about it where it's like I'm okay. at the Super Bowl and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to work. Like I'm going to do my job. And it's like yeah. this is what we grew up wanting to do. So I, I take it in that route. And I think attending live sports was really – I didn't know it was a passion of mine, but mm-hmm. I love the stadium. I love the energy, the new – like food in the same, all the interactions with fans, all that stuff, um, which is why I'm, I was super bummed out about COVID. I think I didn't realize how much I'd miss it, but knowing what I've built over the past few years, I'm so excited for when it does reopen and when we're back. Cause I really think we're going to hit it hard then. No, absolutely. And then you also have a podcast that's number one, uh, also in sports. Tell our viewers a little bit about that. Um, and have you thought about like doing different things? Have you thought about taking the podcast? You love doing live sports. Yeah. Maybe taking it live at a, like an event at a Super Bowl, at a World Series, or at, at a, any of the sporting events that you attend? Yeah, the lot. So events, right, is the next logical step. But it's also probably sorry. It's probably <laughs> the it's probably the scariest step, right? It's like you got you know a million people follow me on this platform, yeah. and you know thousands of people listen to the podcast. But will they show up? right that's right. that's a whole nother level mm-hmm. so the first live event we did was all-star weekend in chicago and we it was through whistle the company i work for we worked mm-hmm. with famous los uh max is nice a bunch of big influence spice adams who was actually playing in the celebrity game and i was kind of like not in fine print but like you know if you've seen a music festival it's like <laughs> yeah drake kanye and then like the guy the bottom, so, yeah. <laughs> right so i was in the smaller font and I was like, I did some promotion of it on my page, but like, it was one of those things where if I don't do that much promotion, I can just say I didn't promote that much, you know, just the human element that we yeah. are. Uh, but I posted about it and I had like, I would say 10, 15, 20, 30 people come out in that two hour span. Some kids drove two hours from a different state. And at that point, it was like what you were saying before. It was that wow moment, like, okay wow, I've built something serious here that people are willing to travel, come buy my stuff that I invented the brand for and want to get my autograph. Like I'm signing autographs. And that's what I'm (laughs) talking about. Like I'm just a person, like I'm not a celebrity. I know that. And I think that's really what I take a lot of pride in, in pushing the page. It's like social media was meant to connect us, right? Like this is how we got in touch. This is the point. And you want to talk sports with other sports fans. ESPN posts something now and then it's done. Like they put out the graphic and then other people talk. No one's talking back with ESPN. Whereas you could come to my Snap account and I'm debating fans about Tyler Hero and James Harden trades. And I think they really appreciate that. So yeah. that's been a major philosophy of mine. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And uh, like you said, you know, sports fans just want to talk sports. That's why, yeah. it's exactly why we're. You know, right. creating a platform for them to do just that and connect with each other at uh, playing the field. But uh, enough about that. But so I didn't do the Snapchat. So I didn't find you via yeah. Snapback. You know, the first time that I saw you was on uh, LinkedIn when you were doing an interview of Mark Cuban. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, before we get into that interview in the classroom series, you know, who were your role models? You know, when we when you started this thing? 
Oh, that's a great question. So I would say one of the people that had major success before me is Omar Raja, who was House of Highlights. He now works at ESPN. But I wouldn't say he's a role model. He's very close in age to me. But just he he was a trailblazer. He kind of paved the way saying, you can go do this. This is how you do this. Uh, a lot of social media people are behind the scenes, right? So then I came out as like a talent person as well. And that's an interesting angle. Uh, in terms of role models in everyday life, I mean, I obviously look up to my parents, my family, my younger brother, uh, mm -hmm. people like that. But in the business world, Gary V was like, and I actually got to interview him and his brother, AJ. Um, Gary puts out a lot of stuff, obviously. Yeah, yeah. He, and so, and it goes through phases. Like I think during college, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Then it, like two years later, senior year of college, I was like, Gary, you're saying the same stuff you said 24 <laughs> months ago, uh, but it is good stuff. It is good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes maybe it's not as actionable as people want, but mm -hmm. he's trying to reach a base of 10, 15, 20 million people. So it's not going to be specific to every single one of us. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I think Gary was definitely had some impact on that um, in the sports world. It's funny. I, I'm not going to say people like, gave me a bad taste, but it's like the way that certain companies do things taught me how to not do stuff. Like mm -hmm. I didn't like the way that sports center was still dressing their guys in suits, right? Like we're not in suits right now, right? No. We're sports <laughs> yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah. When you're going to hang with the boys, you don't throw on a suit. So yeah. I think like just, just using those things <laughs> as role models of what not to do sometimes was as beneficial as uh, looking up to other people. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like, <laughs> me and Rick, you know, we're yeah. the same way. Like, the yeah. suits, like, they just got to go. Like, it's, you know, I don't. It's crazy. You know, it's I crazy. mean, you know, Fox does it. And, you know, like, obviously, like, you know, people like Strahan, like, they look good in the suit. Right, but, right. You know, is it is it necessary? That's right. that's the way I, I look at it. Um, But, you know, talk to us. So, so like I said, you did interview uh, Q, uh, Mark Cuban. You know, you got Gary and AJ, mm -hmm. you know, through this, the classroom series. So, talk to us about how that how that started and you know how you got um in touch with them yeah so wacky story i guess uh so alex shyman who started the classroom series well he started with a group the penn state business sports business conference so mm -hmm. he went to penn state my girlfriend went to penn state abe who's my co-host went to penn state i went to camp in pennsylvania I've grown up like I, it was Texas or Penn state. So I was that close <laughs> to like being whatever. So Alex and I, like I knew of him throughout college, junior year, we both went to Barcelona. We became a little closer, uh, very like-minded, very business oriented, very smart kid. And then we had just always stayed in touch in March. He actually wanted to start uh, right after all or right at all star weekend. Pretty much. He wanted to start managing me. He was like, Jack, you're doing great things, but it's kind of a one man show. Like Abe's the co-host and I have a designer and I have, but it's like for the business operation, it's just like me and I'm doing the content and all that stuff too. So he started doing that a couple COVID hits and he pivots the Penn state business conference to the classroom series. So, you know, he's managing me and it wasn't, I think one of the things I'm excited about is it wasn't like he's managing me. So he's going to put me in there. Like if he wasn't managing me, he still would have picked me. And I think that's what was cool about the opportunity. So uh, I did the Mark Cuban one and cause we had done probably the two months prior, you know, 30 interviews with athletes. That is the one positive to COVID was all these guys mm -hmm. know how to use Zoom now, right? And we know how to use StreamYard and all these different platforms. Yeah, yeah. So I felt comfortable talking to guys and, and feeling them through that vibe. Um, so we talked to Cuban. It went awesome. He, he like, the inner, I deserve credit, but he makes it so easy. And when you get a person like that, yeah. it's the best feeling. Because you're not, like, there's nothing to do besides just set him up. And he's a really smart guy. And then after we talked to Mark Cuban, they wanted me to do it again. And I talked to AJ and Gary, which was a fun experience as well. You know, that, that's incredible. And you, so you've interviewed all these guys off from uh, both, the sports. Both were great interviews, by the way. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. From the sports business side of things, what have you learned from these individuals, from these, you know, they're, they're so, you know, they're huge in, in, in their, what they do that has made them successful in, in whether it be in owners or, or what Gary does or what have you. What have you, what have you been able to pick up from them? I would say number one, their curiosity and their willingness and want to learn. 
And I think that's like my new thing right now. It's like, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, listen to as many podcasts that are informational, take masterclass, which I think is the best value on the internet. I don't know if you guys have checked it out. It's awesome. I would highly suggest it. Um, which ones? But, which ones uh, so particular? like right now negotiation, I've done one on like politics, like we're going through the election. I just wanted to know like the history of that stuff. Um, yeah. There's so many, even the cooking ones are interesting. My <laughs> eggs are better in the morning. Right? There you go. There you go. Uh, there you go. You become and a I, chef. And I think now it's like, okay, now you're a more interesting person, but their curiosity to learn, to hear the other side, to just have conversations that are beneficial uh, is definitely my biggest takeaway so far. That's incredible. And, and then there's, there's something else that, you know, you also take part in a lot of charities um, and uh, one that's personal to you, obviously the National Alopecia Arisha Foundation. Uh, you do great work for them. So tell our viewers about that. Tell us how you got involved with them. Yeah. So I think that's the funniest story about Snapback and something that 99.9% .9 of Snapback would probably never know is uh, my eighth grade year in school. So, and then going into high school, my hair started to fall out. So I'm 14 and I'm like, you know, what's going on here? At first, <laughs> I remember the moment I'm in my chemistry class in eighth grade. I'm just running my hand through my hair and it falls on the table. And then I do it again. I'm like, oh, it's kind of cool. I don't know why I thought that was cool. Okay. Probably because like you're in eighth grade, you're never thinking yeah. that your hair is going to fall out. So through that, I mean, it was it like I went to a private school, so you couldn't hide it. You couldn't wear a hat. You couldn't, you know, you're in uniform. Uh, so that was a battle throughout. I mean, it was some of the toughest times for my parents because as a parent, like all you want to do is make sure your kid is happy, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but then college is started to grow back. The doctor said, you know, there's no correlation to anything. It's autoimmune happiness. I wasn't unhappy. The sun uh, just a bunch of different factors, I think, started that. So by my sophomore, junior, and then senior year, senior year, you have zero clue. And that's when I started the account. So no one who knew me outside of my close personal friends and family had any clue. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really talk about it just because there wasn't any time to talk about it. Um, but there's a few notable athletes. So recently, I tried to get involved with the National Alopecia Arietta Foundation just because we were selling hats. And I was like, these hats, ha the first sales have to go to the foundation. We yep. paired that with talking to Villanueva and Josh Dobbs, who are two notable athletes with it. And uh, yeah, that one is personal to me. And I think it's a cool story. That's great, man. Good yeah, work. Yeah, that you know, that's, uh, that's, that's really great. Um, Appreciate it. And you know, obviously, you, with you at uh, private schools and wearing a uniform, that's, yeah. where, that, that's where that suit you know, exactly. Like, yeah, the problem. suit, tuck in your yeah. shirt. Like, yeah, what's exactly. the difference? You know? <laughs> yeah, it teaches like, you stuff, but it's also like you're forcing everyone to be one way, and mm -hmm. that's not who we are. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, but touching on uh, Gary real, real quick. You know, mm. he was one of the main reasons. Like, you know, I decided to go out there and just start it. You know, yeah. A couple months ago, I was terrified of public speaking yeah yeah you know, and you wouldn't even you you couldn't even tell it now exactly um so let's let's touch on a, cu a couple other things so you worked for the uh you did some social media work with the uh action network as well mm -hmm. you know, talk to us a little bit about about that love those people love those guys so are you guys familiar with the action network yeah i, I get some uh advice from, from are, you are you sports betters are you sports betters uh yeah i mean we're in new york yeah well I mean, Rick. Well, I we don't have to play dumb. Here. Like, I know if I it's not legal in the state. Yeah. Everyone has I, a book. Listen, I, got a I don't like. I, I don't like bookie. those back. I don't like those back channels. I I never really did. <laughs> okay. So, not nah, some so people are really, like that. Some people nah, are I, like that. I'm not gonna lie. He's right on my phone. I hit him yeah. up. Yeah. I hit and I say send it, and he sends yeah. it. So that's good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and those sites are high tech nowadays. You'd be surprised. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you know, I bet throughout college. Yeah. Through, through the bookie it was fun there's there was really thinking back no knowledge on it right no information now it's you're flooded you go to action network you can have every data point <laughs> every advice right mm -hmm. uh yeah. and we would just take the vegas trap lines all day long you know what i mean like that is all you did in college bro how is this how is the number 10 team in the country not favored on the road because they're gonna lose right and <laughs> and so so uh when action network came out i weird you know, backstory. I was connected to someone here, someone there, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I interviewed for the job, Chad Millman, who's the head of content. He has a book 
and I read his book, you know, the day before the interview, which I knew would impress him, like doing these little smart things to get right. in the door there. And I just had a history of social media with Snapback, running Twitter accounts, Instagram. So that's kind of what got me in the door there. Uh, did that for about a year, loved it. I love what they're building. When I was working, it was, it was 60 hours of tweeting, posting for action. And then it was 40 hours of Snapback, right? Or real sports at the time. And I just couldn't do both. So that's kind of what made the move to whistle. But as far as the gambling industry is, it I mean, it's only getting started. Once New York, which mm. has been rumored to be legalized maybe end a year, hopefully, uh, they're gonna start building. I mean, the tax money is gonna be nice <laughs> for New York. It just makes tons of sense, but yeah. you know, I mean it's yeah. still a slow go uh, with these things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, uh, no, a couple of uh, you know friends of ours. They they were on a you know a few times. Uh, you know the, the the CEO and and the executive team, and then you know one of their content people for yeah. uh, Book It Sports. You you hear of them? No, I'm not familiar with them. It they're a new app they just launched last month. So it's pretty much it's pretty much Instagram for sports betting. It's people gotcha. sharing information amongst each other, and then obviously they have some handicappers on there as well that you can right. end up. Uh, they're still in their you know their their first version. But you can you know buy picks from the handicappers nice, and, nice. and talk amongst each other. So I think it's you know brilliant and uh, you know it's a book at sports app if if you ever want to check it out. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. I think that I mean sports betting is a social thing now. It used to be so taboo mm -hmm. that yeah. if you were placing a bet, you don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Now it's the group chat. It's just exactly talking about yeah. the sports bet, and it's like figuring out is there that appetite to share with maybe friends of friends and. Who do you get your information from? You see it on Twitter. You see, you know, there's apps like that. Action even just added like a little blurb where you can write a note on it. So, I mean, we're going to see who wins out. It's a great industry. It's going to be super competitive. The best people are going to win. Yeah. So, Jack, yeah. what's next for you? You've you've done so much in a short amount of time. You know, you you, you know, you got a great podcast. You got you got uh, Snapback. I'm sorry. What what is on the horizon? Like, what are you thinking of doing in the next couple of years, five years? Like, what what part of the what other things in the sports side of the business that you want to do? Yeah, it's the question. I'm sure you guys can imagine. I get a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. So I would say first off, right now I'm at Whistle. Okay. And whistle has unlocked me. So what I mean by that is like I was saying, you know, I'm working 40, 60 hours a week for action. I'm doing my own thing. And then whistle said, okay, take that time and energy, help us out, obviously okay. strategize yeah. content, bring teach us how to podcast, teach us, you know, some merchandise stuff and then partner on a lot of that. But like now start to think of yourself as a content creator, yeah. as building like this mini media property, how to, you know, inter continue to interview these guys. Um, so I'm really loving that. I'm enjoying okay. that building. Building is, you know, kind of the main focus right now. And then oh, everyone's always like, what's five years from now? Um, the funniest part is I think what I want to do with Snapback, what I've created on Snap is like, I love going to work and going to the Super Bowl and going to March Madness and doing these things for work and then getting paid for it. So right. like, I want to run this out as long as I can, right? Because if in 30 years, someone gave me a hundred million dollars and said, you know, you're retired. What do you want to do? I go to the Super Bowl. I think it'd be fun, <laughs> right? I'd hang out in yeah. Miami again for a week. So oh, it's, yeah, Miami's great. Yeah. Yeah. So going to the games and those experiences are really what's up. Um, but I am entrepreneurial. So I've always envisioned maybe starting my own company, whether that be in sports business, you know, it is the passion point for me. But when I'm ready, when I have that idea, but I really love um, Mark French, who is, he worked on the like stick em that the guys put on the bottom of their shoes. He's yeah. now working on X2, which is Kawhi Leonard's new like energy drink. Um, he said like, there's this obsession, mostly because of Gary Vee to be entrepreneurial nowadays, mm -hmm. but people don't realize you can be entrepreneurial within a company. And that's what whistle is giving me the ability to do for now, mm -hmm. but they have the resources, right? They have legal team, they have design team, they have, right. You have people you're working with where you don't have to, I don't have to go out and start my own media company. I can right, be yeah. entrepreneurial within. Um, so I think that's just like something I've held on to and why I'm not like, Coming out of college, I would have thought I want to start something at 23. I want to go raise money and start something. Now, right. I don't feel I want to learn, right? I want to gain that experience because 23, 25, 30, like it's not that, it's not all that different. 
Right. So if it, yeah. let, let's talk about this. Aside from sports business, what yeah. else is it you want to learn and get involved? You talk politics, you talk cooking. Is, oh, you know, I hate you, politics. <laughs> I, it was the okay. worst. It was, I hated them. Uh, I was active in it because okay. I do, you know, I just felt strongly about it. But Good for you, I don't, man. You should I don't, be active. Yeah. I just don't love the idea of politics is working together to find the best common good. And that's, that's just right. not where we are right now. No, right? Clearly we're not. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what are my passion? I, I guess like, I think just from what I've learned with my audience is mm -hmm. there's this massive gap in America. Um, like, you know, we're spoiled. I assume you guys have been to a sports game before and next oh, game, yeah. and that's it. Right. And yeah. you love it. You know, 80% of my audience has never been. And wow. I just think like, mm -hmm. and that's just right. That's bare bones of, they don't know how to invest. They don't know how to right do all these smart things that maybe someone who's university taught has done. So I just think we need so much education in the yeah. country, but yeah. not, not typical education, no, right, education, yeah. right? Like, I don't know. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to sign a lease. I didn't know how to pay my taxes. I still right. don't really know how to pay my taxes, <laughs> you know? So, so I think like figuring out, can we maybe, you know, teach some mm -hmm. other people and have those people experience life the way that, you know, we all want to. Yeah, no, you, you're right, man. I mean, there's so many people who don't yeah, know right. how to open like a, you know, certain investment accounts or it's crazy. Or it's, people, it's, yeah. So people, it's, it's different. It's completely different, but in terms of betting, right? So yeah, I post my bet of the day now on the story because we have a nice partnership and people are like, how do I bet? Right. So for us, it's like, first of all, we could easily find, I can find a hundred ways to bet. Right. I, yep. I could literally bet through your guy after this podcast. <laughs> right. I'll give him his number. <laughs> right. But, but, and on top of that, on the graphic, there is actually a little piece on the graphic that says, make this bet at mybookie.ag. Right. right. So it's not, right. it's there. And it's just like so, people don't even know what a point spread is. And like that to me, it's not a betting thing. It's an mm -hmm. education thing. Like they, they don't know how to do things, which is crazy because we have it all at our fingertips. But it's just like we don't on a day to day life like people like how do you start a podcast? Right. I can tell them and help them. But that you Google that and you could have a podcast in the next 18 minutes. So yeah. mm -hmm. I just think it's like, how do we teach people to to actually do stuff on their own? That's always my biggest advice for people is how'd you get started? How'd you connect to all this different stuff? How do I, you know, go do what you're doing? Like just go do stuff. You gotta start stuff, right? Like you guys started this. The yeah. connections you've made, the I mean, who knew how to do StreamYard before this? Who knew how to do overlay graphics, yeah. right? Who audio tech, all that stuff. You just learn so much that you use in regular life that doing stuff is so much better than just learning about chemistry and, and Pythagorean theorem in school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, you're, you are 100% right. You know, I, obviously I learned a lot in the last, you know, I would say like 18 months, you know, right. I, I co I, you know, I created the, the playing the field app by myself because I was sitting there trying to get fundraising going yeah. COVID hit. So like that was out of the window and I'm like, I'm just going to figure it out for myself because yeah. I just feel passionate about it. And I'm going to do it. <clears throat> the podcast, you know, I went out and pretty much did everything. Every single graphic that you see, right. you know, it, it's, it's something I had to come up with learning StreamYard, learning, you know, learning all these podcast services and, you know, learning social media, which really I was, uh, you know, I'm pretty big novice at, uh, yeah. That's why I, I don't even. I still don't know how to use uh, Snapchat. We're trying to get into. We're TikTok. trying to get into that the TikTok yeah. as well. Um, you know, because it's it's just viral right now. But yeah, yeah. It, it just feels much better to to learn everything and do it all yourself than to just right. hire somebody else to do it. And and the benefit of the younger generation is like TikTok's going to become second nature. But what they don't realize is they're doing exactly what I'm recommending. Is they're doing it right? Like they're mm -hmm. gonna figure out just by doing it, how the text works, how adding music works, how like what makes a piece of content viral. And they're not studying it. They're going and doing it. I think it's super beneficial. Yeah. So so if there's, you know, any other advice uh, for somebody that wants to to go out there and, and you know, make a, you know, a social channel yeah. or, or, or a podcast or, or whatnot, like what's the one piece of advice other than go and just go and do it. You know, yeah. what's the one piece of that, advice? You know, that's my cliche advice. That's the one I always go to. But what I'll say on top of that is um, like, you got to, 
be consistent, right? And that's the biggest thing with a podcast or a radio show or any form of content, YouTube, you have to be consistent. I get people all the time, yo, Jack, will you shout me out? And I say to them every single time, absolutely. Come back to me in a year. If you've posted every single day on, you know, I want to start a Lamar Jackson highlight account. I want to start a, a snap account just like yours. I would love nothing more than to see your account thriving. And I will shout it out in a second, but I'm not starting you off because, mm -hmm. because people expect that if I snap my fingers, right, then their account's going to be successful. That's yeah. not how it works, right? You read the statistics, yeah. 50,000 yeah. posts. Like 50,000 is a lot of posting. <laughs> That's right? a lot of posting. Yeah, right? I mean, wow. I could, wow. Yeah. And and I think you do see TikTok stars, right? Of like, you know, the try. I don't, do you know who Charlie D'Amelio is? Yes, like, I know okay, who Charlie right, D'Amelio right. is. Just trying to make uh, sure. But I have a 12 year old daughter. You know, <laughs> then, then you definitely I, I know, know her all too well. But, yeah. but people see, you know, situations like her and it's like, well, she only posted four times and she's yeah. one in. A billion, like literally yeah. one in a billion people mm -hmm. that's going to do that versus someone like Gary Vee, who's posted 18 million pieces of content for the past 22 years. And he's kind of grown over time. So uh, my biggest advice would be be consistent with it. It's all, all advice is cliche because cliche means it worked. And it's basic because it's as simple <laughs> as like, if you go do it, it will come. It, hard workers tend to get lucky. It's all that stuff. It, it's just be consistent with it and go do it. Because if you don't start a podcast, I guarantee you, you won't have a, a viral podcast. That would be impossible. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. you got to do it. You got to do it some way, somehow. Oh, absolutely. So how long did it take for, you know, Snapback or, or Real Sports at yeah. the time? Yeah. And wh why did you chose Snapback? Did you answer that? I can't remember. No, I didn't. Uh, we, we did a brainstorm at Whistle <laughs> just to figure out. I wish I I got to look and see the name because maybe one day I'll make for a cool story to look at the, you know, the names that we were considering. Yeah. But um, Snap, I think we wanted to include Snap in it and kind of give it that Snap flair. Uh, it happens to rhyme with Jack, so Snapback Jack kind of becomes like okay. a thing. All but right. that, but that kind of came after. So I don't know how we ended up on and Snapback. A lot of people were like, you know, you wore a hat a lot, you were losing your hat. So it actually <laughs> makes thematically a lot of sense. Yeah. But I don't know if we considered many of those things besides including Snap uh, in the actual name. So we kind of just landed on Snapback and. People like it. It's fine. Names are right. Like names are names. Nike. That wasn't cool until it became something. So right. you really just gotta names are names. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So how long did it, you know, take, you know, for it to get, you know, to, uh, you know, a, some some kind of positive, you know, yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, one of the benefits in not knowing like what the peak of Snapchat was like Instagram, you could compare yourself, right? Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I want to get to a million followers. Snapchat didn't give you the amount of subscribers until a month ago. Right. So, so oh, you were okay. just building the only thing you, you could measure on was the amount of viewers. Right. Um, and you didn't know other people, you couldn't go to other people's profiles, other people's accounts. So my way of gaining or measuring success essentially was like when I worked with a company, a merch company, how many sales did I drive? Because if mm -hmm. I could drive enough sales for them to come back, that was the success to me and I could continue to grow it. Uh, people weren't paying me, like no advertiser was paying for just the amount of views. So it didn't really matter at that time. Um, I don't really know when the moment that like, I was like, all right, this is a lot, like we're doing <laughs> really well. It just started to grow. We kept investing in it. Um, and then, you know, the subscribers now and the brands we work with and all of that is great. But in the early days, it was just like build and, and see, you know, I liked going to Texas basketball games and posting about it. So <laughs> it worked out. Jack, are, are you guys getting involved in esports as well? Is that something that you're, you're, you're getting into? Yeah, it's funny you ask. So, uh, I have put off esports for the longest time. I wanted to do them. I couldn't figure out the the streaming computer. I was like, what? Like, I got to build my own computer. And every time I would be like, I don't know how to build a computer, <laughs> which is probably funny because it's, it goes completely off my best advice. Yeah. But I, I did actually have someone make the computer for me and I paid him for it. So I, okay. I will admit that. But over the past month, I've been streaming on Twitch, you know, playing video games, hanging out with the community. Because once again, I think this is exactly how sports fans 
and they're not sports fans anymore. They, they all have multiple touch points. Um, and I just think this is how they engage. My audience loves watching video games. Like they would rather us hang out, talk about the Rams Patriots game, but they don't want to watch three hours of the game. They want to watch me play video games with them, play Madden. And that's kind of a, a unique angle to it. So I love esports, very bullish on. Okay. And then uh, finally for me, so what do you say to kids, your, your viewers, your fans who want to get into sports, who want to break into it? Is yeah. your best advice, go out there and do it, knock on doors? Like, like what do you say to those who want to get involved in, in the world, in the sports business aspect of uh, Yeah. I would say the reason why I suggest to go and do it is mm -hmm. because you need to, like, why would I hire you, right? Like, right. I know you're passionate. Everyone loves sports. I need you to be passionate, but passionate about the business of sports, right? Like there's a million sports, there's a hundred million sports fans, but how many sports business fans are there? So that's number one step is be a fan of the business of sports because two completely different things. It's the, like you love when a marketing campaign takes off, not right. when your team gets a first down. <laughs> uh, so, so to, to love the business of sports, you got to go out and do it obviously. And that's why that will be the biggest advice um, from me. But how can you then bring value not and then you know i get a lot of people who actually are studying sports and they are right they're trying to do their own thing and then they come to me let me be your intern let me do this right and i'm like you know i would love this but it's going to be so much effort on me to figure out where i want to use you to teach you how to do it to manage you to then even have to pay you right like i'm gonna have to do all these things to then give you money to do this so um, come, come to me or come to you or come to him and say, this is what I want to do for you. This is what you'll be missing if I don't. And I think at that point, it's like, okay, if I'm missing out on this potential growth or these potential sales, or these sponsors or better content that I'm interested, if you can show me, you know, make a sample, like go above and beyond. Uh, but you can get to anyone by DM. Like I read through, I don't answer every DM, but I see you know, 95% of them. So if you come with the unique proposition, um, take your shot. Like some people will be like, yo, I got an idea. And I'm like, I wish they would really just write the idea, right? Like <laughs> instead of me having to get back, like just write the idea, mm -hmm. take your yeah. shot. Um, be consistent because also a lot of people, if you're trying to work with influencers or big sports media, they do get a lot of messages. So it's like, you're ignoring me. Like, nah, I just didn't see your message. Yeah. <laughs> you caught me at the wrong time, right? So, uh, and that's more about consistency, like we were talk talking about earlier. Yeah, well said. Yeah, and you know, that's what we've been trying to do. Stay consistent with this. And honestly, it's been a blast. Yeah. You know, uh, not not going to lie. You know, it was, uh, you know, we just fell into it and, you know, it's been going great. Um, awesome. So, you know, through you know, through everything, you know, that you learned, you know, as, as a child in, in the sports business and, you know, just everything that you've been doing, you know, what, what's that like one experience that, you know, really, you know, really hits home, like the, your most favorite thing, whether it's, yeah. you know, interviewing Mark Cuban, interviewing Gary and AJ, you know, going to a Super Bowl, eating better eggs in the morning. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I would say that moment is it's not there yet it's gonna come okay. when well, when I, if when if uh lamar and the ravens get it done and uh, i'll tell you why okay. i'll tell you why it's just like the way we've built the community the way we've nicknamed lamar jackson the baby goat like people identify that right with the page um my favorite team it would just be a culmination right of like i've been working on this page uh -huh. and one of our championships fell right within it he proved the haters wrong i proved the haters wrong there you so, go. Yeah. so i think that would be fun but um as for so far like i mean talking to cuban all the all the athletes and you know cuban that we've talked to have been really cool but being at the super bowl was the coolest one because i was kind of there on my on my own and i think one day like like I said, entrepreneurially, I would love to have a team with me or like elevate people with me. I think that's the next step. But so far, like just being able to go to the Super Bowl in Miami, great game. Uh, even though it hurt a little that Mahomes won because <laughs> he's kind of, you know, he's he's different level than Lamar, but like yeah. that's supposed to be like yeah. this guy. It's, it feels yep. like a little Peyton Brady-ish where maybe okay. Mahomes is going to win all the rings and we're yeah. going to get left behind. But uh, going to that Super Bowl in Miami was awesome. Yeah. yeah, Rick and I want to go 
uh, next year to SoFi. You know, that's our goal. Oh, it looks so it. nice. Yeah. No, Who we're, are you guys we're fans right? of. We're Jets uh, fans. The Jets, man. Uh, don't <laughs> don't shrug. Hey, I man. Would swap our quarterback for the number one pick today. Uh, that number one pick is staying right here. It's yeah. not going anywhere. Trevor yeah, Lawrence. That's is what I'm to saying. He's special. Yeah, He's special. He's a special guy, man. We just got to fire the coach and then, you know, sort yeah, of that's coming. Straight. Well, Don't worry. Well, yeah. well, your coach's brother might be, uh, our, our yeah, coach. I, that. I don't yeah, know how I feel see. about that. Well, he's talking about an extension in Michigan. I was just reading that the other day. Yeah, because he didn't move to Ohio State. They want to extend him up there. Exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> but but we are going to we are going to go to so we far, are going. We so, are. Yeah. Going. Yeah. You know, listen. We stay connected. You down there? First beers on us. And uh, so so last uh, last year in Miami, they did the first ever podcast row. Which uh, I don't. Do you guys consider yourself a podcast? Like I know you have a live show. You have a lot going yes. on, but. Okay. Yeah, we so, consider it a podcast. Yeah, yeah. so um, and this is another example of why, like, I'm not a huge fan of like never always say no or not always, but like be able to say no. Like, yeah. if you're in my spot, go do. It. Like, that's why you know if I gain one fan from this or two friends, right? Yeah. It's a benefit, right? It doesn't always have to be talking to a million people. Yeah. So I go do podcasts, row. I am the most hungover I've been probably <laughs> in my life. Friday night in Miami, right? Yeah. And Saturday is podcast row. I get there. The people I'm supposed to talk to, because it was the second day. First day was like Kirk Cousins and some other people. Yeah. Second day is these no names, right? Uh, and no disrespect to them. One was a Super Bowl champion. One was, yeah. you know, a host for the Vikings. She was awesome. Great conversations. Mm-hmm. And the third guy is this guy named Dale Moss. So I don't know if you guys know who that is. Mm-hmm. Name doesn't ring a bell. All right. So same with me. Former Packers wide receiver, barely played, right? Had only, whatever. Talked to him. Great conversation. He lives in New York. He's like, bro, we got to get dinner sometime. Like super genuine guy. I'm like, yo, where are you Ubering back from? Because we were about an hour outside of Miami. He's like, to Brickle. I'm like, I'm staying in Brickle. Let's just hop in. You know, we talked for another hour after the podcast in the car. Uh, I wake up probably six, eight weeks ago on the Tuesday or Wednesday, and I see the name Dale Moss all over my Twitter. I'm like, Dale Moss? Like, you know, who, like, why are they talking about Dale Moss? He was on The Bachelorette. He's on The Bachelorette. He, <laughs> he essentially wins the show after two weeks, like the first time ever. He takes this girl's heart and just they fall in love. They're engaged. Dale goes from 60,000 followers to 800,000 followers on Instagram. He's the new sensation in the world. And like, I have this piece of content with him. I have a picture with him. I post it. It gets great engagement. I got, I have a girlfriend, but all her friends are like, oh my God, now Jack's (laughs) actually cool, right? Like we talk sports all day. I talk to these athletes. And yeah. now their friends are like, wait, my girlfriend finally thinks I'm cool because I, <laughs> I, I have the number of the guy who won the Bachelorette. So, uh, yeah, podcast row next year, SoFi, we'll, uh, we'll have to do a in person. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Oh, yeah. Done absolutely. deal. Love yeah, it. sold. Yeah, and, and, and that's really what it's all about. It's, it's, you know, at the first couple episodes, like I sit there and like look at how many views, how many downloads. Yeah. And then uh, and I'm like, I don't really care because we're making like these awesome, you know, relationships with all our our guests. Like well, that's every, the biggest. Every guest that we've had has been, you know, awesome to to, to speak with and and to connect with. And that's really what what it's all about. For that is, we're just talking sports. I think you just revealed the biggest secret and, and hack of podcasting that people don't get. And I didn't get it too. I, you know, you're always checking the numbers. How are we going to monetize this? How, like, where's this going to lead? Right. Are we going to take a Twitter clip and that go viral? And like, realistically, it never does because podcasting <laughs> is at a very infancy stage and the mm-hmm. discoverability is none. It's it's kind of a shitty uh, form of uh, communication right now. It's going to grow. But that's the one. It's like you get to talk to someone for 45 minutes just because you can say, hey, I have this podcast. If you bring them a unique proposition. They come on the show. How else are you going to talk to these people for 45 minutes? And we've become friends with these guys, yeah. Derek White, Austin Eckler. We're chatting with them, texting with them. And like they, they become friends of yours because you're willing to have just a you know relaxing conversation, talk about their interests, care about them. Um, and I think the most important download 
is the one from the guests a lot of the time. And that's the relationship that is most beneficial, not me reposting my Instagram story, right? Like, yeah. I think that's the biggest confusion is when people come to me, like, can you shout me out? It's like, yeah. they follow me for a reason a lot of the time. And they might come to like, they might come to this podcast because I was on it and they're interested, but then they have to go love you, right? So yeah. I think like, you know, you can't expect, and that's another downfall and pitfall of podcasting It's like, growing these things are hard as shit, right? Like I have almost a million subscribers. And my podcast numbers are never gonna reach that. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it really is these relationships. I, you know, I'm having a blast meeting you guys and talking with you guys and definitely will meet up when- uh, Absolutely, oh, absolutely. Over. Yes, we will have hangovers. Trust me. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Hangovers and locks. That's there we I go. Mean. Yeah. But listen, man, I'm glad you're, you, I hope we become a friend of the show. Come on when anytime you want. We'll talk about whatever you want. This is this Appreciate is a home it. for you if you want to come on, man. Appreciate uh, it. You know, I'd love to have you again. So this, this was great. I had such a blast. This was awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank, thanks again. You know, it was, it, like I said, it was a blast and uh, can't wait to, to meet up over at uh, SoFi. And yeah, uh, I'm looking you know, at it on my screen, it really looks like the coolest stadium. Yeah, so it, it really does. Oh, what is it, halftime now? Yeah, what's yeah. your score? Did anyone? Uh, it? It's uh, hold on one second. I think it was it's, 17 to three the last that's time what I, I saw over there. Yeah. So, I, you know, I try my to sicko over. self. You know, I'm I'm giving you guys the whole time, and then I look up for one second. I see James <laughs> White on a fake punt right before the end of the half, <laughs> and I have James White under rushing yards. And I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me on a fake punt? But I think they caught a hold. So now I got to go look at the game log and his box score to see how many rushing yards James White had on a fake punt. Yeah, well, I got the Rams defense going, so I'm hoping it wasn't that. that I, I started I my I started the Rams defense for my girlfriend for her fantasy playoffs. So we're in it together, Mike. Because hey. you know, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done if they don't if if they don't put up points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want her to, you know, dislike you after exactly. after she just started liking you because exactly. of, uh, yeah. of Dale Moss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going for my my three peat. I just eked out wow. getting into the the playoffs, so I'm trying to talk about that, man. Trying to trying to three peat here for the yeah. first time ever in that. That's game. impressive. That's league, hard. So. That's it, hard. It is, uh, but you know, we'll yeah. we'll see. I need. Well, he's the commissioner really of the league, around. man. He's the commissioner of the league. No, don't, don't try and like <laughs> think that uh, I got some like. No. You know, <laughs> Quick story about treatment. our fantasy league. One year, I think this was two years ago. He's like. Uh, I was going to have the Saints defense. And he's like, no, 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 play another defense or whatever. I yeah. was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, go ahead. And I get like blown out. I get knocked out of the playoffs. And I get a text the next day like, hey, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm sorry. You just knocked yeah. me out of the playoffs. <laughs> and, he won the, and, he won the, and he won the title that year. Smart so. man. Why would you? That's on you for even listening. <laughs> yeah, that. that's exactly. Yeah, there you go. So. Yeah, man. Come on. Get with yeah. the program. But yeah, uh, Jack, again, you know, it was, it was an absolute a blast. real pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, we definitely want to have you on again and, and, uh, keep in touch for sure. Absolutely. Fellas. Appreciate it. All right, man. Be safe. Keep, keep up the good work. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you later. All, All right. right. Have a good one. Uh, that was a great interview, man. He is. Absolutely. A yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Man. And you know, I mean, it's a, it's a testament of, you know, just go and put in the work and, yeah. and, and then it'll come. But like he said, you know, it's all about the relationships. You know, exactly. we what we're doing, it's all about, you know, the the connections that we're we're forming through it all. You yeah. know, I mean, um, you know, Kevin was watching. Uh, yeah, yes, thank, yeah, thank you, Kevin. A absolutely. Kevin, for and for our viewers, I I follow. You know, I keep up with Kevin on LinkedIn. Kevin is doing some good stuff, man. For for Wild Chat Sports. Wild Chat if Sports. Anyone hasn't uh, checked it out? Go check it out now. He's got. Amazing interviews, um, yeah. you know, in including including Mr. Floyd Mayweather. I, who, yeah, I saw that be, the other day. Yeah, he put the uh, Jake Paul, but yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. <laughs> Logan Paul. He's fighting Logan Paul. Is it Logan uh, Paul? I think it's Logan Paul. Logan right. Paul. But Who's no, he posted Paul. Is there a Jake, Jake Paul? Paul? Jake Paul's his brother, I think, or his brother, or his cousin, or something like that. But no, but for those of you who okay. who, who follow Wild Chat Sports, Kevin posted. Uh, uh, his phone call, a cold call he did to Michael Ruzioni. Um, and it goes to show the testament of perseverance of knocking on doors and, and just, you know, going for it. Like, and like uh, Jack was saying, take your shot. And, uh, you know, he posted the, the, the message that Mike left him saying, Hey, you know, let's schedule a time. And that's what you got to do. And that's what, 
that's the one thing that sets guys like Jack and Kevin, you know, all these guys apart is, and you know, even like us, we take our shot, man. We go for it. You know, we don't care about the rejections, or whatever you got to go for it. So great. Kevin's doing good stuff. Yeah. Guys, you just got to play the field. Oh yeah. Play the field. There you go. Uh, Jack is playing the field. Yeah, speaking uh, of, but seven, Jack, 17-3, Jack. 17-3. Yeah, he, he, he signed off, but he might be watching uh, on, on YouTube or yeah. uh, LinkedIn. But, uh, yeah, 17-3, and the Patriots just got a nice uh, long pass going there. Um, but, and you know, that we'll, segment we'll, we'll of the show was brought to you by Play the Field and PlayingTheFieldDating.com. So if you're looking for your MVP – Starting the league or meeting with friends to talk sports, go to playthefielddating.com. The beta version's out, and the app will be shortly. A couple months, Mike? A few months? Yeah. Well, within the next uh, – I mean, the beta's out on the web right now at playthefielddating.com, but the mobile apps for the iOS and Android should be out in the next few months as well with a brand spanking new, beautiful little uh, user interface. Um, there you go. You know, has your profiles in the shape of a trading card. And uh, you know, be favorite teams fo- showcase right on right on the front, and you don't have to go out there and find a you know picture of you at the stadium or wearing a jersey. Just pick your best picture; it'll be showcased. Your favorite team right right front and center. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, playthefielddating.com. And what do we have? We got parlays. We got parlays, parlays. this week. All right. So let's let's get the- into it. Week fourteen in the league. Yeah, well, we picked we picked the Rams at plus five, uh, minus five here. Yep. Uh, and Darren Donald just gets so a, far. Is that a sack. Was it a sack? I think so. All right. Um. All right. What do we got? Uh, December thirteenth. Uh. Let's see. Let's get. Let's go to our Book It app for our friends at Book It. Yep. Gave you a nice shout out today. Look at that. Nick Dave Trent over there. I mean, let's go with Kansas City at Miami. Kansas City at Miami. Here we go. Kansas City is is uh, favored by seven. Um Kansas City at Miami. What day what date is that? Is that the here we go? All right, I got it up. Kansas City at Miami. Kansas City is favored minus seven at Miami. Yeah. Take it away, Um, Mike. You know, I I like Miami. You know, they're they're sneaky. They're sneaky with their defense. I think they're going to hold them down, um, and they're going to score on them because Kansas City's defense is nothing uh, nothing special. So right. I I do I don't know who's starting for Miami. Um, if it's going to be Tua or if it's Patrick, um, but I I think that they can cover that that seven points for sure. Because, uh, you know, you know they, they have a good they have a good defense, and that's the thing right there. They have a real good defense. They're gonna be this game is gonna be played. Uh, this game is gonna be played. If I'm not mistaken, hold on, let me just check the lines real quick. Uh, this uh, this game is being played in Miami. Um, I think that it's gonna that the 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 Dolphins are gonna cover the seven. Uh, like you said, they got a good defense. Brian Flores is a good coach. Yeah, it's gonna be warm down there. But you know, this has been. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the Chiefs are pretty successful in Miami. Correct. As we I just agree. as we just spoke about with as uh, we saw Jack. February third of this year, they're they're yeah. pretty good down there. Um, but no, I just think that um, I'm with you. The defense of the Miami Dolphins is pretty good. I think Tua is going to play a, a good game. Uh, I think it's going to be a competitive game. But at the end of the day, Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Travis Kelsey, enough said. Yeah. No pull um, out. Ty- Tyreek Hill, I think, is a little banged up, or is he is he sick? I don't know. Um, I think I saw something on the injury report for Tyreek Hill, yeah. but uh, I'm sure it'll be all right by um, by then. Um, you pick the next game. Yeah, I got a uh, an interesting one here. Um, Pitt uh, nuts. No, well, that's that. When's that game? Yep, that's the eight twenty Sunday night game. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. Buffalo just losing to the Washington football team. Buffalo is favored at minus two and a half. Uh, Pittsburgh losing to the football team. Yeah, well, right. Correct. Pittsburgh losing to the football team. Buffalo's favored minus two and a half. You know, Pittsburgh's kind of tired. They played some. They've played a lot of football in the last few weeks. 
Uh, James Conner supposed to come back, but they haven't been running the ball. Ben's thrown over 50 plus times in the last game. Um, and you know, I just think that Buffalo is coming into their own. Josh Allen, Josh Allen is like Ben Roethlisberger is looking at a younger version of himself pretty much in Josh Allen, but with a more of a cannon of an arm and can run mm-hmm. all over the place. Oh, he's very um, athletic. And sure. obviously the, the Steeler defense lost, has lost Bud Dupree. Uh, they lost Devin Bush. Um, and that's that's just too hard to overcome. Uh, so I'm going to take Buffalo to cover the two and a half at home Sunday night in West New York. Yeah, I'm actually, you know, kind of surprised that Buffalo is favored. Uh, I get it, but I just I, I guess I didn't really expect that to, to happen. Um, but I do think Buffalo can win this game and it's two and a half. So it's a field goal. So, yeah, uh, I will take uh, I'll take Buffalo on that. Um, I want to touch on the New Orleans Saints at the Philadelphia Eagles. Intriguing. Jalen Hurts has been named the starting quarterback of the Eagles. Carson Wentz has been benched, everybody. Um, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, he the, – the month of December does not agree with Carson Wentz. You know, there was a, a graphic. It's, he, he tore his ACL. He – it was another injury, and now now he's benched in the month of December. So uh, it does not agree with him. Jalen Hurts, you know, showed flashes last last week. Obviously, you know he's an athletic uh, athletic quarterback, and um, it's it's a seven point spread uh, with Taysom Hill still still taking the the play calls over there at. Um, at uh, New Orleans with Drew Brees still with, you know, fractured ribs and yeah. punctured lungs and, and whatever else he's got. Um, but I, I don't, I, I can't see Jalen Hurts like just revitalizing that team to, to that much. And it's only seven points. I'm going to have to take the Saints on that one. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you on that one. I think there's just so much chaos yeah. and dysfunction with the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Um, that the Saints have a lot of weapons. Yeah, I, you know Michael Thomas, Taysom Hill. Um, I Alvin think Kamara. that Kamara's there. Their defense is pretty stacked. Um, but with all that's going on in Philadelphia, with you know Jalen Hurts coming in and Carson Wentz is going to be on the bench. What that? What's that dynamic going to be like? Is Doug Peterson going to coach the team next year? I mean, so much going on he's over on there. The hot seat. He's yeah, on he's the hot. you know it's just such a it's such a you know it's just turned into such a mess. Um. Uh, New Orleans is going to go into that game. They're going to cover the. They're going to cover the spread. Uh, I think comfortably and uh, at, win uh, Sunday afternoon at four twenty-five at Lincoln Field, at Lincoln Financial. Yeah. Um, All right. What do we got? Well, let's we go got the two local Giants. Now. Giants first, I guess. So let's start with a playoff team tied to the <laughs> uh, lead in the NFC East. You got the Arizona. Oh, the other, the other game has a playoff team too, man. Well, well let's start with. That. <laughs> Let's start with this one first. Yeah. We got the New York Giants, the first place or tied for first place New York Giants at home with the visiting Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray coming in. The Gi- the Cardinals are road favorites minus one and a half. Uh, I'm Mike, I'm taking the Giants. I'm taking the Giants plus one and a half to win outright. I think their defense is playing well. I think they're running the ball. Um, is Daniel Jones back? Daniel Jones might come back. I think Joe Judge has sub- solved some of the turnover problems with Daniel Jones. I think the Giants are just coming into their own right now, and I think they're going to win. I uh, Kyler Murray's struggled a little bit lately. You know, not nothing, nothing alarming, but um, I like I like the Giants to win this game. Plus, it's going to be cold. I think Arizona's it's going to be cold on Sunday. Uh, you know, weather's going to be a factor. So, I, I again, I like the Giants. I like Joe Judge, the attitude, the whole thing. To upset with the one and a half, I I will have to agree with you because you know obviously uh, momentum is on their side. Yeah, or you know that's what it is. Beating beating Russell Wilson in Seattle in Seattle, you know that's 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 no easy task. Um, you know probably a little easier this year with the with the twelfth man not being a factor. Yeah, but they did it with Colt McCoy and they shut down Russell Wilson. It's not about their offense; it's about their defense mm-hmm. and how they're playing right now. And, um, you know, if they could shut down Russell Wilson like that, you know, I mean, he was, I mean, he was unstoppable in the beginning of the season. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, what was it? Five, nothing at halftime. 
Yeah, it was five nothing at halftime. So it was like, like it was like a it was like a uh, a baseball game in the fourth inning. Five nothing. I think <laughs> I, I think the momentum is on their side. Arizona lost last week, and uh, the Giants have all the momentum, and they got a little fire lit on under them as well with Washington right you know right there with them. Yep. So um, I like I like the Giants to pull this one through. All right, there you go. And last but not least. Is this one a one and a half point spread too, or? Uh, no, <laughs> it's a double digit spread. Yeah. The beloved New York Jets traveling to Seattle to face a highly upset, highly motivated, coming off an, a tough loss to the Giants, Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are favored minus 13 and a half. The Jets coming off a just heartbreaking loss which could be a historic loss of the franchise mike depends I, on what side of the coin you're yeah, on yeah exactly <laughs> exactly well if you if you're still so, if you're the jet if the if if you're the new york jets players then yes yes um, it hurts if you're the coaches but, um, it hurts if you're but a if fan you're the, but if you're the fans you if you're calling us for season tickets and you want to know what we have to think yes mike 13 and a half take it away 13 and a half is a lot, but it's also not a lot. Seattle. <laughs> Seattle by 19. Okay. So you think they win by close to three touchdowns? Yes. All right. I'm going to go with this. That was a tough loss last week. Can the Jets recover from that loss? I don't think so. I, I not that they were going to win the game. I think they'd be competitive, but as long as you have Adam Gase coaching, if you have number fourteen Sam Darnold back there, uh, mm. I don't see how they win this game. I don't see how they win the game or or cover the spread. He, now here's the thing: I think last week they did uncover something with Josh Adams and with Ty, when Ty Johnson. You got two running backs with speed; they can run. I mean, if they if if the if the Jets you know, sort of focus more on them and give them those touches and sort of control the game that way, that might add a little wrinkle to it. But with this coaching staff, it's just who knows. So I'm going Seattle, minus 13 and a half. I'm with you. I think they win by – because I don't know who covers. That secondary is still young, and DK Metcalf is going to be running all over the field. Um, uh, and, you know, yeah. Tyler Lockett as well. Yeah. So, uh, so, I mean, they got – name your weapon. They also yeah. brought back Rashad too. Yeah. Exactly. Off of, uh, IR. So, like, they, yeah. they have another weapon at the disposal exactly. this this week. And, like you said, a very motivated Russell Wilson. Yeah, exactly. You know? And that's the thing. Uh, so, just too much to handle for them. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Seattle's going to pull away late with a couple of touchdowns and, and cover the spread easy. So, there you go, folks. Those are our five picks for the week. Uh, yes. We got Seattle minus 13 and a half. Uh, we're taking uh, New Orleans minus Giants. seven. Taking the Giants, Giants. the upset. Um, who else do we have? We got Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, and um, what was it? The uh, not the Philly game, but no, we Buffalo. had the uh, KC and Kansas Kansas City, City. Miami. Miami. We got Miami. Miami at the plus seven. All right, so those are our picks for Week 14 in the National Football League. Week 14. How depressing does that sound? Yeah, I know, right. Pretty, dude, it's going to fly. Pretty soon you got the playoffs. Next thing you know, we're doing shows about spring training, pitchers and catchers reporting, yeah. March Madness, NBA playoffs. Well, well, you know, the NBA is going to be in full swing uh, yeah. around there. So, you know, mm -hmm. pitchers and catchers because, yeah, we don't need to go. Oh, well, let's but not get there yet. About, yeah. Yeah. It's, you it's, know, the, the NBA is going to be uh, – you know, ni nice, nicely flowing by then. And yeah, and did did they decide on March Madness? Are they doing? Not it? sure yet. I mean, they're listen. They're playing right now. I mean, they're still playing. Yes. Um. I. Um, I, I my guess is there's going to be. A, I wonder if they're going to do a bubble for the March Madness. But now here's the other thing: a vaccine. By the time we get there, a bunch, you know, a lot of people are going to be already vaccinated. And so you know, we'll see how that plays out. Um. But it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I think they're gonna play March Madness. I think they're gonna have protocols in place, and uh, you know, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Let's uh, we're gonna sign off, and I'm gonna watch the rest of this Rams Patriots game. Yeah, and uh, we have one more week of shows 
left in 2020. We will be back next Tuesday. Uh, we got some great guests lined up for for the show, yeah. and um, you know everybody out there that that celebrates. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Of, the first of eight crazy nights. And, um, you know, we'll see you back here on Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Twitch. Until then, enjoy week 14, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Enjoy the football, everybody. We'll see you next week. Peace. Have a good night.